Okay, so this is a very valuable high yield question for USMLE, not just this Pianka versus Sienka stuff, but also the hematologic uh, parameters here. Very tricky, okay? Very, very challenging. So, and this will provide you some value. So, this patient has epistaxis for a couple days, creatinine is 3.8. That's very fucking elevated. Normal creatinine should be about 1.0. You can get a normal range, theoretically, 0.7 to 1.2, but 1.0 is normal on USMLE. And as a patient gets older, 70s, 80s, 90s, creatinine can creep up 1.1, 1.2, but it really shouldn't get above that. Uh, if you get a creatinine of 2.0, you've lost about 90% of your renal function. So this patient who has a creatinine of 3.8, the implication is we have essentially no renal function in this patient. And we've got positive antiprotonase 3 antibodies, which are synonymous with C anca for USMLE, okay? Cytoplasmic, antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody. So antiprotonase 3 equals C anca equals Wegener or Wegener granulomatosis, which is now the former name, unfortunately, because cumbersomely, the new name is granulomatosis with polyangiitis, okay? In contrast, antimyeloperoxidase antibodies are synonymous with P anca, perinuclear, antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody, and that corresponds to microscopic polyangiitis and Churg-Strauss, the former name. Of course, Churg-Strauss is now known as eosinophilic granulomatosis of polyangiitis, okay? Now, just real quick looking at this renal biopsy, no, you don't need to know this renal biopsy, okay? Nor can you really see anything too clearly here. I just, once again, I'm uh, being an asshole by putting an image in here just for the sake of it, uh, but this is, in theory, supposed to be showing us a necrotizing glomerulonephritis. For USMLE purposes, this is about getting you points, okay? If, fuck this biopsy for a second, if they just tell you in the question, they say, e.g., dude has a septal, nasal septal perforation, he's got otitis, he's got red urine, he's got hemoptysis, and he, a renal biopsy shows necrotizing glomerulonephritis, that's Wegener. Okay, so we classically get with these vasculitides, Wegener's vascu uh, vasculitis, you get necrotizing glomerulonephritis. That's the descriptor you need to know. Just say, okay, Wegener, necrotizing glomerulonephritis, got it. Okay, so moving forward here, we've already established that because this is Wegener or granulomatosis of polyangiitis, uh, antiprotonase 3, are, we're only looking at the C anca answers. Okay. So we eliminate all the p anca ones. Now, this is where the value is. This is where it's tricky. In renal failure, high blood urea nitrogen can cause uremic platelet dysfunction. Uremia means renal failure. Don't fucking confuse it with hyperuricemia. Completely different, okay? It's easy to confuse. Uremia is just the name for the syndrome of renal failure. How the patient presents when he or she has renal failure, that's uremia. Nothing to do with hyperuricemia, okay? It just sounds similar. So high BUN in the setting of uremia can cause a qualitative, not a quantitative, a qualitative dysfunction of platelets. So uremic platelet dysfunction, I've also seen it written as acquired platelet dysfunction. And this is going to cause an increased bleeding time, but no change platelet count. So our answer is B here, okay? Very difficult because you'd think if there's an increased bleeding time that we would get a decreased platelet count, but you need to know for renal failure, you're gonna choose no change platelet count, okay? So bleeding time should normally be two to seven minutes. We would see a bleeding time greater than seven minutes here. Platelet count is 150,000 to 450,000. So we'd see something in the normal range, okay? And this is what's causing the epistaxis. So uh, platelet problems can often present as petechiae, okay, uh, epistaxis, that's classic. Now, I don't want to make this too long of a discussion, stay concise, but uh, another high yield talking point is anemia of chronic disease and renal failure, which would not, which in and of itself would not cause epistaxis. So let's say you have this patient right here in this question with epistaxis and low hemoglobin, and you ask a student, why is the hemoglobin low? And they're like, hmm, anemia of chronic disease. Not impossible, but they're fucking bleeding. So it's reasonable that they have low hemoglobin because they have epistaxis, right? Anemia of chronic disease in and of itself doesn't cause epistaxis. You can have a patient with advanced with chronic renal disease 
who has low hemoglobin, MCV can be normal or decreased, by the way, in anemia of chronic disease and not just normal. But you can have a patient with anemia of chronic disease and renal failure who does not have epistaxis, okay, like even though they would have uremic plate dysfunction. So it can be tricky. But the, the point I want to convey to you is that the epistaxis here is not due to anemia of chronic disease. The epistaxis is due to uremic platelet dysfunction, okay? Why does a patient get, get nosebleeds or, or petechiae in, in renal failure? Answer, acquired platelet dysfunction, uremic platelet dysfunction, platelet count normal, okay? Bleeding time increased. That's it. A lot we can talk about. I know you don't want to see a 19-minute clip here, all right? I'm obviously going to make more content. So if you liked this question, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.